This evening I'd like you to turn with me, please, in your Bibles to Psalm 112. Sangeetham Nootri Panirandai. Naam Sandha Varathle. Undraad Vasnamudha Laindad Vasnamarikum Vasitom Palakaringalai Parthom. I want you to look in your Bibles in, to Psalm 112, verses 1 to 5, please. Verses 1 to 5. How does this psalm start off? This psalm starts off with praise. Hallelujah. The word hallelujah literally means praise Jehovah. Yehovah Devan Kustotram Envidudan Hallelujah and Ravatika Artham. And the Vartaye Todangidan Pirage or Nidi Manudia Varke Yepudi Yurukam Endinam Veda Tle Vasikram. How will a righteous man's life be? Well, his life will be a life patterned after praise and worship. The word says, Hallelujah! Kattarikku bayande. Avrudya kattalegalil migamum piriyama irikara manishan bhaakyaman. Isn't it amazing that God in His mercy has so ordained it? That a man who loves God and fears God and delights himself greatly in the word will never lack. Wealth and riches will be in his house. Look at verse 3. We have already seen it but I am just emphasizing it again to you. Don't you ever listen to people who say I followed the Lord and I lost everything. I don't know which Lord they are talking about. Because if you are following the Lord who is Jehovah. The possessor of the heavens and the earth. You will have it made in life. Can I have an amen please? You will have it made in life. True success is to give God the honor due to him. Remember this man is not focusing on wealth. This man is delighting greatly in the word of faith. In the word of truth. He is making the word his delight. His pleasure. Parang in the manishan. ஐஸ்வரியத்துக்கு பின்பாக ஓடுகிற ஒரு மனுஷன் அல்ல ஆஸ்தியை நாடி செல்லும் ஒரு மனிதன் அல்ல இவன் எதை நாடி செல்கிறான் கர்த்துடைய பயம் அது மட்டுமல்ல தேவனுடைய வசனம் அவனுடைய பிரியம் என்று நாம் வேதத்திலே வாசிக்கிறோம் அதிலே மிகவும் பிரியப்படுகிறான் I'm feeling sleepy. No, you don't feel sleepy. Because when you come to God's word, you become sharp. The word tells you how you can live. The word gives you insight about the wisdom of God. You don't yawn on the word of God. Instead, you receive the word of God. You make it your delight. Can I have an amen, please? And if you're in the yawning mode, you better change. You better change. Because you've got to understand you can't come with a disinterest and read the word of God and expect God's word to do something in your life. God's word will do something in the life of a man who makes it his greatest delight. Now such a man, God can trust with his wealth. Riches and honor will be in his house. Wealth and riches. Highlight it please. Wealth and riches. So that you don't think there is ambiguity in the word wealth. God adds the word riches also to it. Aasthiyum aishwaryamum avan veetil irukkum daritram alle. Amen. Daritram alle. Appadhi enraal daritram enpadhi. Yedho ur avikuriya valkayin adayalam enni daiv seedhi ninai kaadhi irukkum. Vasanathai poruttu varaikkum sangeetha nootri panirandhi. சங்கீதன காரனுக்கு ஏற்ற ஒரு வசனம் அல்ல இது கிறிஸ்துவுக்குள் இருக்கும் ஒவ்வொரு நீதிமானுக்கு பொருந்திய வசனம் நீதிமானுடைய வாழ்க்கை எப்படி இருக்கும் என்று காண்பிக்கும் வசனங்கள் உங்கள் வாழ்க்கை எப்படி இருக்கும் என்று காண்பிக்கும் வசனங்கள் பிளீஸ் கெட் திஸ் ரைட் சம் ஒன் ஹண்ட்ரட் அண்ட் டுவெல் இஸ் அ டெஸ்டமினி டு தைஃப் ஆஃப் அ ரைச்சஸ் மேன் ஹூ லிவ்ஸ் இன் கிரைஸ்ட் யூ You, whether you are a brother, whether you are a sister, if you are in Christ, you better get a hold of this word. 
Many read it and think, well, this is good for the Old Testament. My friends, if it was good for the Old Testament, how much more in the New Testament? Because the Old Testament saint came under a limited righteousness. Whereas you as a New Testament covenant believer comes, come under uh, unlimited righteousness. Can I have an amen, please? பழையற்பாட்டில now follow please. Look at verse 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. For convenience sake I am going to be reading in the Tamil Bible. But you look at it in your Bibles. Whether you have a Telugu Bible or an English Bible or a Tamil Bible. Just follow please in your Bibles. Because I want you to see it in your Bible. Half the time people think these things are found in pastor's Bible. Not in my Bible. Well you better have your Bible with you. Come with a paper and pen. Come prepared to hear from God. And when you get a hold of these things, grab a hold of it real good. Learn from God what He has in store for you. Dare to believe Him. Look at verse 6. Avan endrikum asaika pada diripan. Nidi man nitya kirti ullaven. The man will not be shaken. He will not be moved. Dur say the ket kradinal bayapadan. That means fear can never get a hold of him. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Can I have an Amen please? A Lord Amen. Now that's you. That's you. We live in an imperfect world. There are chances you hear bad news. But bad news don't frighten you. Because your heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Avan irade muridia irkum Avan tan satrugalil sari cut to the lay, Kana matum by a pada de ripan. He is not for one moment intimidated by the enemy. Satru I part of an by a podu the Kadaya, the end and all satruk in eridum, Mudiva on a key air caname terium. Some will say such an unexpected thing. It's unexpected for you, but it's expected for us. We know what the end of the wicked is. We know what the end of the wicked is. The wicked and I are not friends. Nor should you befriend the wicked. Jesus died for the sinner. You got to draw the line of difference between the wicked man and the sinner. Who is a wicked man? A wicked man is a man who legitimizes sin. A sinner is a man who sins because he is in sin. He knows he is sinning. He is desperate to come out of sin. Such a man has salvation. But a wicked man is a man who legitimizes sin. He makes sin look comfortable. He makes sin look good. And God hates the wicked man. But he loves the sinner. The Bible says Christ Jesus died for sinners. Can I have an amen please? நீதிமான <laughs> You can scores of examples. People who try to legitimize gay marriages. They are wicked men. Can I have an amen please? They are wicked men. They are not social workers. They are not social workers. They are wicked men. When they legitimize something, God hates. Then the Bible says they qualify to stand as the wicked. Then there are others who try to bring laws to make abortion look good. To make drinking look even better. 
to make gambling legal. Now, just because nations pass laws that legitimizes certain things, it doesn't make it legitimate in the sight of God. Gambling is sin. A lot of amen, please. Gambling is sin. Drinking is sin. Living licentious lives is sin. Adultery is sin. And just because people work to make prostitution legal, it doesn't become legal in the sight of God. Wickedness is always wickedness in the sight of God and God hates it. Now keep reading please. How is the life of a righteous man? How is the life of a man like you who qualifies in Christ to be a righteous man or a righteous woman? Look at verse 9, please. Is that what you read? He gave to the poor and he became a poor man himself. Is that what you read? Now that's what people like you to believe. If you give, you'll come to nothing. Who told you that? Who told you that? When you are making your delight in the Lord, you will have in super abundance. Vari iraitan, yeregalik kudutan, avanudi anidi, yendanraikum nirkum. Avan kumbu magi may I wear tapadum. His horn will be exalted. The word horn literally means authority. Write it down. Horn. It's not you having two horns and walking around in town. Some do. They walk around like they have two horns. But those are not good horns. They're bad horns. Because those horns are sprouting horns which come out from your pride. But when you see the Lord bless you, when you speak, you speak with authority. When you speak, you speak the absolute truth of God. And you don't back down. You don't back down. You don't give excuses for it. Is Jesus the way, the truth, and the life? Sure, he's the way, the truth, and the life. What did you think? He's one of the ways. He's one of the truths. One of the lives that you have. No, he is the way, the truth, the life. And that's an absolute truth. Nobody can change it. Not you, not me. Love me or hate me, that's the truth. Now look at this man. His horn is lifted up. Why? Because he is delighting in God. Greatly. He loves the word. Listen very carefully. This evening, even if you don't get too much, just listen. Get to love God's word real good. And if you don't have that love, ask God to create in your heart that love. I did. When I got saved, I didn't have a love for God's word. I didn't know what it was. Because I never heard the word preached. But then I started hearing people preach the word. And I prayed this prayer. I said, create in me a love for your word, Lord. I want a love for your word. Create in me that love. And if you really mean, mean it, just like you're praying to, for deliverance. Just like you pray and ask God, Lord, give me a promotion in life. If you really mean it, God will create in your heart such a love for God's word. That you'll begin to see everything in the word become real to you. This will be no storybook. You will begin to see the very principles of life in this word. And people will be amazed at the wisdom in which you operate. They will be surprised at you. They will not be able to withstand you. They will not be able to stand up against you and prevail. Why? Because when they plot and plan against you, their plots and plans will come to nothing. Because you will walk in the wisdom of God. Make it your prayer. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me at the same time a desire for your word. Now look at verse 10. Now when people see you succeed in life, they'll bite their teeth and gnash their teeth. 
dentists will be in business. That after a time, even they won't be able to help them. They won't have anything. They'll grind themselves into oblivion. Can I have an amen? Never flatter yourself into believing that the world appreciates you when you succeed. You will be a biggest fool if you did it. When you succeed, you need to know one thing. Not everybody appreciates it. Not everybody is happy. There are the few who love you who may stand with you when you are succeeding in life and enjoy your success. But there will be the ones who gnash away with their teeth. They are angry at your success. They can't stand you. Look at Psalm 112 verse 10. What will happen to the, such a man? Well, the Bible says he will perish. Follow, last verse. Dunmar say Ariyam. The desire of the wicked will perish. But if you read Proverbs chapter 10, the Bible says the desire of the righteous will be granted. Can I have an amen, please? A wicked man never wants you to succeed. He can't stand good success. He wants you to fall into sin. He wants you not to succeed. He wants, he's waiting for your downfall. The good news is, his desire will perish. <laughs> the bad news is, all his hopes will never come to pass for him. What is good news for you is bad news for him. That's the reason why. When you come before God this evening, remember you're not just helping somebody out. You're helping nobody out except yourself. If you delight in the word, you, are change, you, are, you will operate under a changed attitude. Your mind will be different. Your attitude will be different. You will take it as a high privilege to hold the tithe, which is the Lord's, in your hand and your offerings and say, God, I am honoring you with everything that I have. Giving will never be a terrible thing in your life. Because you know when you give, you will see the blessing flow into your life. Let's bless the Lord this evening. Clap our hands, give Him thanks, and then we are going to give.